Well, this is a little side project. This is a 80, the last year of the Cummins 12 valve, 88, 89, something like that, uh, chassis. And uh, we put a Studebaker on it. There's a little bit of extra. Now I know what you're thinking, but there's a little bit of extra work here, but that we got to close that out. This is as far as we got. This will be a rat rod when it's done. But there is a Cummins 12 valve. We just built the body mounts. They bolted onto the chassis using the factory. Studebaker locations. And there you have it. It's going to be a hauler. Car hauler. Anyway, um, I got a couple things done. Give you a, a good show. So I did get into the frame and got the uh, paint in there. Let's see. All the way down. I, I doubt that the top side of the frame, I even though I got uh, material on it, I'm sure it didn't stay, but I have to flip it over anyway. So I'll call this the first coat. Um, God, I made a mess too. I mean, not horrible, but I'll have to come back. I started sanding some of this, but I thought, what the hell, I better get it, let it dry. Um, and then I got to remembering, you know, my suspension kit's coming in and I have some welding to do here and over there and then there and then a brace of course for the shock uh coil over towers but started thinking about the exhaust now i mean um within the drawing the it's a triangulated four link so the links are going to go the upper links are going to be high um but one inch yeah about one inch above the top of the frame going out to the rear end and um, I, I have at least an inch clearance so what I did was I took a piece of a two inch PVC which is about two and a quarter two and three eighths clamped it on the center up there cut this out clamped this up to here until it was touching right there and in the center and so I created a um, line of sight a straight through line of sight for the exhaust, right? You know, it's kind of interesting. It looks round all the way up, but um, but then you get up here, and that's an oblong. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're both oblong, but the front one has a sharper angle. So now I can get everything all the way through, uh, and then I'll be underneath my upper uh, upper link bar he'll be coming off the center i can come out and over the rear end which would be about in that neighborhood right there and uh keep it all tucked up in there we can see that the body is sitting right here so i'm barely gonna make it there there's the the rear rear end location that, that's probably pretty close to factory, but I want it centered in the wheelhouse. But I'm just going to make it um, around the body. So that is that is what it is. So in any regard, that's what we got going today. That's what we got done. I got to flip it over. Well, the other side of that, finish dressing it. I did dress them. I mean, they're a little long. See, you can see it hanging down here. And this one I got pretty close to flush, but he's hanging down a little bit. And then I shaved them with the uh, with the flange on, on there. So they, they, they so they look really nice when they're done. Got them all welded in and welds turned out really good. You know, I'm happy with everything in it. So there you have it. But I got to flip it over anyway to get a coat of paint on the top side of the rails, front and back. And, uh, yeah, I know I'm welding to it. I was going to wait, but I can splash another coat on. I'm only welding here and up there. And then that, 
just in the center, you know, up front. So, all right. Time to go sit down and watch a movie or something. It's a new day. Weekends. I just love weekends. So I want to show you how I did this and show you how it turned out. So you can see this piece of PVC. It's centered on that slot. I intend on two and a half inches of, uh, of exhaust. Two and three eighths is the width of this piece of pipe. So <clears throat> clearly two and a half will fit in there, right? You know, but, but she angles just a little bit in. I want it to angle in, she's straight. I don't know if I showed you, but the mufflers are these, uh, um, what the hell are they? Flowmasters, okay. They'll sit in the, in this cavity right here, but I wanna shoot straight through this guy. And like I was explaining in the last video, she'll go, frames upside down, but she'll flip back in this neighborhood after after the uh, sorry the bracket will be in this look somewhere around this hole is where the the mounting for the lower control arm which will be under the frame and the upper control arm which will be approximately one inch above the top side of the frame this will flow in between those because it's a triangulated uh, four link I finished the bottom side of the half moon and you can see probably more clearly now how it's tied in here and there and how she centers on on the uh, the new cutout you'll see right in here you just sitting come on just sitting right in here on the bottom of the pipe so it worked out really well I'm not gonna have any inter interference I'm not gonna have to put a, a little kink or a band or anything in the tube and it'll flow back from the engine of course the engines uh, engine mount to engine mounts 24 inches the narrowest point of the cross member is 24 inches course that's the engine mount it'll set farther back but I should be able to get in now and clear um, you know be as wide as the headers of a modest transition from the header down to the to the uh, tube but that this will be nice and straight catch the muffler right here and then do my bends right there very very clean looking now <clears throat> I want to finish painting the inside of the frame and another reason flipped it over so now I'll get the top side which is the bottom side right now covered coated and paint on the interior side and a lot of people you know some say you got to do it got to do it got to do it this is going to be a driver believe it or not this is going to be a driver um, but um, I, why I got the frame off why not coat it why not preserve it? Why not protect it? Uh, show car, uh, sure, it's going to go to shows and stuff like that. But, but at the end of the day, because I have the frame off, because I can, I'm going to go ahead and, and coat the interior side of the frame um, just to keep it protected. Then after, I don't even need to go into that because you'll see all that. But there you have it there you have it continuing with the small detail shit because I can well hello got a couple of things done I'll take these off um, let me get the, the TV shut off you don't, don't need that background noise 
let's see here. <coughs> Looking for the TV. Oh, there it is. Get that turned down. Okay. Basically, spent some time this morning. I wanted to get the inner rails of the frame painted. Um, yesterday, I mentioned that I had the frame the other way around and and I took, what I did was I took a welding uh, TIG, TIG raw, uh, uh, feeder and I took a, 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 ray, a shirt, if you will. I took a shirt, not this shirt, but a short sleeve shirt and I just cut the sleeve off of it. Then, then I took the sleeve, you know, uh, it was a short sleeve, so whatever, six, seven inches long, eight inches long maybe, and just cut it. So I had six inch fingers, you know, all the way around the shirt. I, I began taping the edge of the shirt, then wrapped the shirt as I taped the shirt around that TIG rod. And basically what I did was I stuck it in the end of the frame as far as it would go, pulled it out, put it in, pulled it out, just so that I could get some paint in the areas of the frame. Because of all the welding, it would have flashed back. Now, I did paint it. I did prime the frame before I closed it out, before I put the boxing plates on the frame. But, um, of course, the weld's going to burn it back. So I got as much on there as I could get on there. And uh, at this point, I just wanted to make sure I had coverage. <clears throat> so I did that yesterday, and I flipped the frame over today, and then I took my gun, and I just used a cheap gun because I'm just using enamel, flat enamel, I like enamel for the paint for the frame. Not going to powder coat the frame, <clears throat> and I can show you as we progress. But it, this is a 1931 Plymouth frame, and it, you know, it has some pitting. The frame is straight. The frame is true. All that, no accident damage, none of that kind of thing. But it had some rust pitting in it, and I, I didn't like that. I wanted it smooth, so I glazed it um, in some areas. But I'm certainly not done with it because I need to weld my front suspension on. And so nothing up here has been has been addressed. <clears throat> so I want to glaze it. And then and then of course once you glaze it and block out that glaze, you've got material in there that prevents you from being able to powder coat the frame. Um, I could play with build and stuff like that, but you really, you know, powder coating is really a one-time shot. You can recoat. There's a number, you know, I could come and block it down. You can have, I can have them build it to um, 12, 15 mils, block it out and take it back and have them recoat it. But then your the the likelihood of it peeling is goes up dramatically. It goes up dramatically. I've been in the powder coating uh, business for for geez. 2017, so it's five five years. I'm out of it now, but I mean, uh, been actively involved in it, powder coated a number of things. Got a lot of friends in it, and I, I've seen the results. And yes, you can you can to put two coats of powder coat on. You can preheat. You can do all those things. But I have seen results from second coatings and rework type jobs that they just don't stand up like the original uh, electrostatic bond to to raw metal. So. The next step then is, hey, should I go ahead and paint it with um, automotive paint, a urethane or something of that nature? And it's a frame. And, and not in the sense that, uh, that that's a bad thing, but in the sense that urethane um, dries. It's, it's a relatively soft material, uh, but it chips very, very, very easily. And underneath the car, it's going to take rocks and chips. What I have found, what I did on my 37 Dodge, uh, what I've done on, uh, well, several other projects is the underside of the car. This will be undercoated with a, a, a bed liner on the bottom side of the car because it helps as a sound deadener. This will be painted with, with uh, enamel. And so I just use an old gun. I go in and I spray a, a Rust-Oleum type enamel after it's primed, after it's primed, and then I put on a Japan dryer. And this may come in the video backwards simply because of the 
fact that I'm using my cell phone. I should try to mirror this. But anyway, Japan dryer is a hardener for enamel. So um, it, it allows the, the paint to dry a little faster. It's just a couple of ounces per gallon. So you don't go in, uh, you know, I built out a quart and I used a half of an ounce. And, and it, it gives the opportunity for it to dry a little faster. But the, the second piece to that is that you, uh, enamel can go on nice and thick. So you can build a, good, a, a relatively good body. Yeah, I'm going to have to wait for a while for it to fully cure. It'll, it'll surface dry, but it'll be soft. But then wet sanding becomes extremely easy after, you know, a few days. You got a week bef before this stuff is going to be hard enough to, to dry sand on it. But I have that. I, I, this isn't a production thing. I have a week. I could, I could poop around and do a number of things on it. And I will after I build out the frame. I'll still have a week. I will let it dry. But at this point, I decided I wanted to get the interior of the frame done. Yeah, I'm going to weld on it. I am going to weld on it. I'm going to burn some of that paint. But this is from this point here to this point here is an open sea channel. And that's where all of my uh, fuel lines, my brake lines, my wiring, all of that will run, will chase through here. I've got access up here. Um, in the, on this side, I've got access back in here. Um, the brake booster was originally here so I can get around the frame. On that side, you can see where I have access. Now, I took the gun, too, today when I was painting, and I just uh, turned my, my pattern so it was spraying this way and shot in these ends, too. That's why you see a significant uh, black area there. Then I came over and I got the interior side of the C-channel. There's no weldments going on here. The transmission cross member that mounts onto here, again, the frame's upside down, will be uh, bolted through because it'll be removable. Um, the exhaust cut out the bottom side of this. I, uh, I painted that. And then the underside where the gas tank goes in, I painted that. And at this point, it's starting to flash out. It's probably you know, kind of a semi-gloss at this point. The back there I put on nice and heavy but I put three coats on and <clears throat> I like the build of enamel. I like the fact that it can, it can uh, um, give you a, a few mills to work with. And then I can come back and I can wet sand it uh, where necessary. Those areas of course were fabricated. They didn't have any pitting that the, the uh, X bracing didn't have any pitting or anything on them. So they, they, the surface of those guys is just, just beautiful. Unfortunately, when I when I did the top side yesterday, I I had a run and I didn't see the run. It was on the outside. It's actually right right there. But I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, in a week, I'll knock it down, clean it all up, so on and so forth. And when I come to spray, do the do the skim coat block out the frame, prime the frame, and then spray it all out with black. Of course, I'll hit those areas again too. So I intend on blocking, if you will, wet sanding all of that out. Um, and, and I have one, one run, darn, um, from yesterday that I didn't find today. I had a few runs yesterday, but I, I blocked all of them out except for one. Why? I don't know. Black paint over a green or a dark gray frame you'd think you'd see it but i missed it anyway the long and the short of it is that's what i did today uh and uh, very happy with the results and moving on and moving forward here's a quick walk around to the frame you can see it's drying back this is ideally this satiny look is what i want in the end and the run right there you know it was flipped over it came down the side Boop, right there and I did block that out but you know and there's a little bit of dirt in it and all that kind of thing but that's not that big of a deal then that 
and that's that's awfully wet still but you can see it's open so it's it's hollow from back there all the way through and if you remember the brake line installation there's a hole right there where the brake line comes out it's actually it's not it it's behind it that hole there and that hole there were locating holes for for bolting through to make that side exactly the same as this side and but <clears throat> that's where the brake line goes and then he'll run up I'll put a hose around the line and then it'll run up here that holes will be inside so it doesn't vibrate against the the uh, the chassis to make noise and then uh, somewhere in here uh, actually yeah it goes into here and into here and into here these are for the running board uh, running board mounts these two so it'd be this one here there's some more running board mounts anyway so the brake line then runs in here and then this is the mount for the master so the brake line can exit on the back side or on the front side to attach to the master um, the other side then you see the two holes right there those are for the fuel supply and return line and then that hole and that hole again for or for registering if I need to keep them great if I don't I doubt I'll weld them up I think every frame should have a couple of holes in the bottom for drainage at the lowest at the lowest parts of the frame <clears throat> so I won't cover some of those up these I don't know what I'll do with uh, uh, my most of these will be blanked with my suspension but because uh, the suspension center line is right there's a hint of it right here it's drawn on the other side right here goes over that hole yeah so I was off one but it goes right here these are in indicating lines for the uh, the shock tower mount and then they can get a good close-up there now you can see you know the age of this frame um, leaves pits you know just from rust that kind of thing it's not a structural concern but this this sanding primer this is where it was blocked down where you can see start to see the edge of it and then where the pits are well because I'm going to be welding right here I don't want to F up work that I've begun so then then this will be skimmed all the way down I am actually going to try to preserve if I can that that might be difficult in fact I've lost most of the letter yeah there should be an S in there oh it's right here there's an S there that's a I don't know. Oh, that's a, a welded up hole. That's what that is. I put brass on the outside when I welded it up. And I'm going to try to preserve that. But if I get frustrated, I won't. <laughs> I just won't. Um, on the other side. Right there. I was able to keep that one looking really nice. So, again, if I can keep it, I will. If I can't, I won't. And, of course, everything on the inside, that's all new metal. So, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Now, like I said, um, I used flat enamel on this. Uh, not gloss. I think... Uh, my, my, my preference is kind of a semi-gloss or a satin look and um, I did purchase flat with the intent of blocking the whole thing down with 400 and then putting a, a uh, clear coat on it 
and I'll just see how it looks when I'm done because the enamel builds so nice that I may not have to do anything um, if I like it or I could just go and put the final coat on as a semi-gloss black too I mean either way but I do want to get some some decent build with the enamel so there you have it the explanation and the close-up okay question is what am I doing today <coughs> well at this point I've decided you know I, I notated earlier the pinholes um, not the pinholes the rust pits you know that kind of thing so you can see on the other side you know I'm well let's just go over there um, excuse me so I'm primed out in this section here that I started with some time ago <gasps> I painted the the X brace and then now I'm addressing this side so here you can see there's a plug weld um, yeah that's a plug weld for a brace that went in to capture this I'm on the back side of it I, I must have I don't remember exactly how I did that but that's a plug weld there's another plug weld and then there's oh I don't know you know stuff like that all over so, what I'm doing is I'm just skim coating it. You can start to see a little bit. Yeah, you can see a little bit there where I skim coated. Cleaned up the edge. You know, that kind of stuff. There you can see some. Up in here, you can see it kind of telegraphing through. But up in there... You can see the edge where it's coming into those plug welds. So basically coated, coated it and hit it with a shot of uh, sanding primer. And just letting it cure out. But um, want, want it to look good, right? Just getting it straightened out. Worked my way back to here. Remember, I'm welding up in this area right here. Most of that's just primer right there, but, you know, just so I can get any bare metal from sanding. <coughs> Excuse me, attacked. Um, so, that's what I'm doing. Taking up time. Uh, it's, what is it, about 7 o'clock in the morning right now. Got up about 5 and, and uh, pooped around for an hour, hour and a half. Anyway, um, just continuing on. You might think I'm a little bass backwards, but, you know, I wasn't going to do this until uh, much later in the game. But I got my email. All of the parts are in. Uh, pardon me. The shipping costs of the FedEx costs have been tallied up. Um, I've issued the final check. For the suspension components, everything is in. He's receiving the check in a couple of days, and we'll ship everything. So, so I should uh, next week. I'll start to see uh, the parts come in. So that for me, that's good. But what that also means is that I got another weekend, another weekend uh, to figure out what to do. Uh, and of course, during the week, I I usually pick at it a little bit and so that's what I'm doing I'm picking at it and just trying to kind of continue on this is work that needs that in my mind needs to be done inevitably just to get it clean and uh, looking the way I want it to look so so that's what I'm doing that's what I'm doing picking away at it the more linear feet of frame that I get done and actually in prime the better right knowing that I'm going to be welding and you know I don't I'm going to put quite a bit of heat into this area you know so i don't want to weaken the the finish on it so i'll continue to work these two sides the very back is done primed and painted the x brace is primed and painted i will spray the entire car well again you know i've sanded everything and, and sprayed the black wet sanded actually sprayed the back but i will come back and wet sand it again 
uh, when I do my final final paint job on it. Um, but I'm I'm going to uh, assume that I'm going to be doing some hole drilling um, in the rails, a number of other things between now and then. Not that the primer piece is, is going to interrupt that, but that, you know, after I got to get all the, the harness and all that stuff run. Uh, so that, that's what I'm doing. There's the game. Um, and, uh, uh, the status at, at this point, just chipping away at it an hour and a half at a time.